Samurai Champloo is a truly unique series that masterfully blends hip-hop culture with an ancient samurai aesthetic. Basically, if the Wu-Tang Clan made an anime series. For years now, it's been my favorite anime, and I don't see anything outside of a sequel series or a loosely related spin-off changing that. It includes three amazingly written characters stumbling their way through a violent, beautiful, and zany world culminating in some of the wildest humor, heart-racing action, and most touching moments I've ever seen on screen. I could honestly go on for days about all the different things that I love about this show and why I hold the series in such high regard, but plenty of other fans before me have already analyzed and praised this show ad nauseum in their own video essays. I just want to talk about a specific episode that's always stood out to me as a truly great example of how simple yet amazing Champloo can be. That episode is Gamblers and Gallantry. Picking a favorite episode from your favorite show is no easy task. If I had to compare it to something, I imagine it's like trying to pick your favorite pet or your favorite child. There are a lot of episodes of Samurai Champloo that I'd classify as masterpieces, but many of them have multiple parts that make it harder to narrow them down to just one episode in the story. Gamblers and Gallantry is unique because A, it tells its own contained story within the overarching narrative, and B, it's one of the few, if not the only, true love stories in the series. Now, I'd never pretend that love stories or romantic comedies are my preferred genre of entertainment, but no matter how cold or bitter a person might be to the idea of love and romance, I think deep down we can all appreciate a good love story here and there. And this love story begins like most love stories begin, with some kind of perfect coincidence or serendipitous event that brings the two characters together. Jean, who's on his way to his first day of working for a food vendor to make money for shelter, spots a woman who seems lonely and depressed looking down over the bridge, as if she wants to throw herself over the ledge at any moment. Sort of uncharacteristically, he stops to talk to the woman and potentially talk her out of suicide. The woman plays it off and they go their separate ways after a short conversation. Later that night, while Gene is struggling on his first day on the job, the same woman he saw on the bridge earlier walks by the eel stand. They do more than just talk now as she decides to teach Gene about his own job and ends up working alongside him for the rest of the night, serving customers, laughing, and enjoying the time she spends beside him. It's when their shift is over and the night comes to an end that the woman explains that tonight was her last day as a free woman and starting tomorrow she'll be forced to work off her husband's debt as a prostitute in a local brothel. Jean doesn't take it too well. Tough break, nigga. Now Jean, a lonely and depressed man himself, has just met a woman who may be the love of his life only at the worst possible time. He goes to see her the next day at the brothel using the fact that she left her umbrella behind as an excuse. She tells him that her name is Shino, but she won't really have a use for that name anymore. She's forced to cut their conversation short and go serve a customer. And after Jean tells the owners of the brothel that he has no money, they basically beat his and ask for being a broke loser. Fight back, nigga. Fight back, nigga. That's not entirely true. Jean very well could have overpowered them and even killed them easily considering how strong of a swordsman he is. But Jean lets the men pound his face in because the pain he feels for both Shino and the pain he feels for himself for not being able to be with her causes him to shut down and not fight back because no physical pain that the men could bring him could feel any worse than the emotional and mental pain that the situation has already scarred him with. Jean convinces his traveling companions, Mugen and Fu, to give him some money in order to buy Shino for a night. When Jean comes back, he's finally able to spend some quality time with the woman that he thinks that he's in love with. And it's the moments between he and Shino, like their first night in the brothel and the first night that they spend together at the food stand, that shows such a subtle intimacy between the two that always gets to me. The two are rarely shown embracing or being physically romantic with each other at all, but just from the looks that they give one another and the ways that they speak to each other, it's still crystal clear to the viewer that there is some kind of deep connection that they share. 
The way that Samurai Champloo consistently uses ambient moods and a lack of dialogue and physicality to express meaning and significance has always been one of my favorite things about the show. The story ultimately culminates in Jean realizing that even though he made a promise to Fu that he and Mugen would escort her to Nagasaki, and also a promise to Mugen that once there, they would finish their fight, he needs to free Shino from a life of servitude first, even if that means he dies in the process. My favorite thing about Jean's decision is that, although it's made out of love and on the surface might appear to be selfish, it's really more selfless than anything. He knows that freeing Shino from the brothel means that they won't be able to be together because the only place for her to take refuge is basically a prison for women in which he'd have to stay there for years. And even though Jean is risking his life to free Shino, he still wants to honor his promises to Mugen and Fu, which would mean leaving Shino anyway. It's a lose-lose situation either way you slice it, but Jean, the great character that he is, knows that the best scenario is one that works for everybody but him. And he accepts that. In the climax of the episode, Jean and Shino make their escape. And when they get surrounded and all seems lost, who arrives but Mugen and Fu just in the nick of time to help Jean out. And this is one of my favorite moments in the entire series because up to this point in the story, the connection between Moog and Jean and Fu was still uncertain. We knew that they were at least tolerate each other, but this is one of the first signs that they actually cared about one another. And we actually see them do something selfless and risk their lives for each other. Even if they don't know it themselves yet, this is an early sign that they're truly becoming friends. The episode ends with Shino and Jean standing at the dock and Shino finally standing up to her bag of a husband. Jean pushes Shino's boat off into the water without so much as a hug or a kiss and he watches her as she fades away into the fog and hopefully on her way to a better life. She's never mentioned again and we never find out what happens to her or if Jean ever finds her. Like most stories in Samurai Champloo, it was just a blip on the paths of these characters' lives. But as the show constantly preaches, those small blips are what life is really all about. People, places, and things come and go in and out of our lives, and from the outside looking in, they might seem insignificant. But the short time that Jean and Shino were able to share together meant the world to both of them. There's a whole B storyline to this episode involving Mugen training a sumo beetle named Rodriguez to fight other sumo beetles in order to make quick cash that's both ridiculous and hilarious. And it might seem unimportant, but I love how such a zany and straight up dumb plot line is intertwined with such a beautiful and touching love story. It's a great microcosm of the show as a whole and how it's able to weave together all these different vibes, moods, and emotions into one mostly coherent narrative. And this almost goes without saying, but the music in this episode is top tier. Both the song choices and the moments at which the songs play. The tune that plays when Shino and Jean first meet each other and she starts dwelling on her impending future and life of servitude. My, when you cook something, you make sure it's well cooked. The beat that plays as Gene is getting his ass kicked by those brothel owners. The way the ending song starts as soon as Gene tells Shino to drop from the ledge. Let go. Like I said before, Samurai Champloo is my favorite anime of all time, and picking a favorite episode was hard, but given everything I've already praised about this episode specifically, what really sticks with me is this. We're all going through something that we may not want others to know about. We tend to hold our more painful truths inside ourselves in hopes that they can be resolved in secret, and therefore we can be spared the embarrassment of appearing weak to those around us or maybe even exposing our own inadequacies and personal issues. We can learn to mask our trauma and hide our true face from the world, 
living in a facade of happiness or contentment. Gene's entire life is this. He rarely speaks, he rarely shows emotion, he rarely engages with others. All because engaging with others on any sort of level runs the risk of them discovering his past and unlocking that pain that he's been forced to bear for most of his life. Gene is a lonely and lost wanderer searching for someone or something to live for. And when he finds Shino, he finds someone like him. Someone who feels doomed to spend the rest of their lives in misery and isolation. As hard as it may be to acknowledge the trauma that we want to keep hidden from the world, it can be infinitely more cathartic to release that pain and let others help us when we really need it, rather than suffering in silence and desperately keeping our emotions bottled up. What I've learned over the course of my life is, it's admirable to endure pain, but it's smarter and safer to heal.